Hello, I'm Mark with RAND 3D, and uh, as a CATIA instructor, I find that a lot of uh, new users, when building assemblies, they forget to anchor their base component, fix their base component. And because they forget to do this, uh, often their base part will move, causing all the other parts that are constrained to it to move with it, and now nothing is aligned with your front or top or right side views like you might want. Uh, for example, if we were to insert, right click up here, go to component, existing component, and I go find the components I want to use. So let's say I want to bring in this um, T support. Now, how an assembly works is the parts origin, the parts X, Y, Z, 0, 0, 0 point is sitting on top of the assemblies X, Y, Z, 0, 0, 0 point. Now, physically, we don't see either of those right now, but they're both matching up on top of one another. So when I say front view of the assembly, I'm seeing the front view of this part. Now, what we're supposed to do is in the assembly workbench, so I'm gonna switch workbenches here, choose the assembly workbench, has the two little gears, we're supposed to put a constraint on that assembly part. We come in here, fix component is the constraint, and we select that base component. With that being constrained, if it was ever moved, drag the little red dot over to the uh, model using the compass. If we did accidentally move that part, we could always hit update and it would bring it back to its original location. Now here's where the mistake comes in. Users forget to place that constraint. So I'm going to delete that. Right click and say delete. And now if I was to place the compass on that part, like it is right now, and accidentally move it, users don't know how to be able to restore that part back to its original location. Now, there are some tools in some specialty workbenches that allow you to do it. If you have the license, you go here, start, go to digital mockup and go to DMU navigator. DMN license is the one that unlocks this. In that workbench, we specifically have a tool for restoring the location of our parts. It's right here called reset position. And it, if no parts are selected, it automatically restores all the parts back to their default locations. If uh, one part was selected, only that part moves back. Now that solves the issue if you have the DMU license. Uh, the DMU Navigator Workbench. Um, however, if you want to be able to um, restore this without having to have a special license, we do have a way of doing that as well. What I would do first is I'm going to go back to the Assembly Workbench because most people building assemblies will have that capability. I'm going to drag the red dot back over to the part and we're going to accidentally move the location of that part. Now, because we don't have a constraint on there, the update button doesn't exist, or at least isn't available to us to be able to restore it back to its original position. So the question is, how do we make this go back to its original spot without really deleting it and inserting a new one? Well, the trick to that is using this compass. If you right click on the compass itself, there's a function here called snap automatically to selected object. And when that's turned on, if I right click on it again, I'll see there's a little check mark next to it. So now I know I know I have snap automatically deselected object turned on. If I now click on the part that I'm trying to restore its location of, the compass jumps to that part. And notice, even if I take it off the part again, and I select on that part up here at the top, the compass always goes to the same location. The compass is going to the part's origin. Now our goal is to make the part's origin sit on top of the assembly's origin. Again, we can't see the assembly's origin, but it's there. There's a point somewhere out there in space considered 0, 0, 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this compass while it's snapped to the part's origin. We have its position uh, relative to the origin here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set all these values back to 0. 
Now the compass is green. Green means it's attached to the part. That's important. If it was gray, we just click on the part again to make sure it was attached correctly and it would turn green. So I'm going to type in zero. Click in here, zero. If you hit tab, you can do it a little bit faster. Tab, zero, tab, zero. Forgot this one. And after zeroing all those values out, if we hit apply, it moves the parts origin to the assembly's origin. Now, when I hit close, if I was to tell it to show me the front view, I get the true front view of that model. If I said, show me the right side view, I get the true right side view. I don't get some skewed view that was after it had been twisted in a different location. Now I can take this base component, use the fix constraint, and fix it where it needs to be. All six degrees of freedom have been accounted for. And now we can go ahead and constrain all of our other parts to and around this model. Uh, that should help you make sure that if a part gets moved accidentally and you need to be able to constrain it back to its original orientation, uh, you have the capability to do so. Have a good day.